Speaking of trouble, I was telling this story. You do realize that the reason why one man, there's only one man in this sport that refuses to talk to me, to do interviews with me. You do realize that's your fault, right? <laughs> <laughs> he still won't talk to you? Refuses to talk to me. That's awesome. See, you deserve that. I See, deserve, you're such yeah, an instigator. It's, uh, like, like the Bob Sapp thing. Right, right. Like you're such an instigator right here, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well... <laughs> All right, let's do it my minute. Okay, let's do it. Let's do this minute. Wow, your boy McCorkle, believe it or not, actually just wrote in something on that Bob Sapp comment. Really? Jeez. Do you want me to read what he just wrote? I mean, is it funny? Because usually he's not that funny. He said, he said, well, he's well, don't worry. I was afraid of being he's like, I he's like, I wanted to go on the I wanted to go on the MMA hour with you, but I was afraid of being Bob Sapp. He said Ariel Hawani in the MMA hour has become more confrontational than Chris Hansen in the Catch a Predator. Wow. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> how did he just how did he just fire that off? That dude is unbelievable. Yeah, he was waiting. He for permeates him. everything, dude. He is such a parasite. Unbelievable. I think we're giving him okay. way too much airtime. I think so. All right. So hey, you're so hey, excited. This is good. I love how excited you are right now. Yeah, I felt I felt great to be creative again. So all right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Several time UFC champ and longtime MMA hypocrite Ken Shamrock was breathing sighs of relief the past few weeks as he thought he'd lost his crown of hypocrisy to John Jones. But upon further review, the verse inked on John Jones on John Jones's chest, Philippians four thirteen, actually demonstrates quite the opposite. I have a holy Bible here, and I'm wow. going to go ahead and open it up and take a look. And it states, "Thou shalt drive drunk at three a.m. in the company of several women, none of which shall be your baby mama." Whoa! So actually, he wasn't being hypocritical at all. He was actually just following the letter of the law. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Jesus. I saw I saw an editorial stating that Brock Lesnar should be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. If by being an overrated douchebag is qualification enough, then I should have been qualified as soon as I stepped foot off the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Um, Can you see me right now, now, by the way? Uh, Can you see me? What's that? Can you see me? Huh? Can you see me? Yeah, I see. Okay, okay. I just, wanted to, see? I just wanted to, I just want you to know that when you when when you don't hear a reaction from me, I, I want you to know why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, by now I'm sure that most of you have seen the photo shot of Chris si- the photo shoot <laughs> of Chris si- showing her more feminine side. Well, this is embarrassing, but we met here in Indianapolis uh, during a Street Made, my sponsor, mm-hmm. photo shoot for uh, for a commercial shoot actually with her and Sarah um, Kaufman. Kaufman, yeah, yeah, Kaufman, yeah. Um, she, great, it was a great time, and now I have a permanent reminder of our magical night together. Chris Cyborg, oh, but see, the tattoo artist didn't realize he didn't have an H in there, so uh, I just. That's, now it's Chris that's, Cyborg. That's not um, nice. I don't know if you can you see that or is that backwards? I could, I, that was that was very nice. I, lo- I love I love the fact that you actually like drew on yourself. That's amazing. It was, I'm, I'm dedication, <laughs> dedication. Okay, so Johnny Hendricks recently expressed oh. his thoughts on cyber haters and keyboard warriors with no talent trying to milk one last drop of life giving goodness from the celebrity tea. He must have. He must have been thinking about McCorkle. <laughs> that's, that's a really good point. Um, <laughs> so Joe Rogan's made a lot of waves lately. Congratulations, Joe. I'm really happy for you for finally getting your black belt. Um, it takes a lot of time and dedication. I think it was seven years as, as a brown belt. Um, but that's not why I'm really happy for you, Joe. I'm really happy for you because you finally decided to share, shave off that hairline. And boy, it was about time because you were definitely uh, approaching Dana White oh. hairline circa 2001. Wow. Um, that's the boss. And man. all serious. That's the boss. It is the boss. <laughs> it is. In all seriousness, uh, thank you very much, Joe and Dana, for paving the way, for making it acceptable uh, for white guys to, to shave their head and be bald. Um, here's a short list I've compiled for those white guys that don't help our cause. Uh, Shane Carwin, Jason Williams of the Sacramento Kings, uh, me and Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady, what's your beef the, with Wayne Brady? No, I'm just talking about white guys that shouldn't. Oh, pay oh, I missed the white part. Okay. Hey, hey, you got to pay attention, brother. <laughs> no, no. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> oh goodness. Are you Christ. ending on Wayne Brady? No. Well, um, that's gonna be my final joke. Will you be at the UFC Fan Expo this weekend? Um, I will be. I will what? be. I'll be signing for uh, Jocko and F3. I'm probably going to make a couple guest appearances in the places. Hopefully I can steal a T-shirt somewhere, something right. like that. 
So just look. You're for, gonna be there. I will be there. So I'm gonna look for the the booth with the least amount of people lined up. And you'll find McCorkle. And <laughs> I'm setting you up for that. I'm setting you up for that. They don't let him in those things. They won't even let him if he bought a ticket. <laughs> they would. Donna wouldn't sell him a ticket. So there you go. <laughs> Matt, always a pleasure. Uh, I thought that was one of your better ones. I mean, I I, I think. When you start with the Bible joke and end on a tribute to Fedor, it's, it's a little too much for me to handle, especially with no punchline on the tribute. I mean, I'm not used to that kind of thing. But nevertheless, you came in on a show that featured Mike Tyson and Dana White. Here you are, Matt Mitrion, sharing the same uh, spotlight as them. That, that's got to be a, a career highlight for you. It, it most definitely is. It most definitely was. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot for letting me get on there. I haven't done a minute in a long time, so it felt good to be creative again. And let us know. And remember, it's just a roast, so don't get your pants yes. in a bunch, everybody, and write a bunch of stupid stuff. It's a joke. Can you tell Tito right now? He's probably not watching, or maybe he is. Tell him. Give it up. Tito. Come on. I like you. I, as a matter of fact, dude, I, would, I, I, like, I like Forrest a lot, but I'd like to see Tito go out on a win. I like Tito. He and I have spoken several times since all my jokes. We've spoken in a couple different situations. Uh, I like to see Tito win, but I also like Forrest. So I just hope nobody gets hurt. So, Tito, talk to talk to Ariel again, please. He's a good guy. He doesn't mean to look like a terrorist. It's not <laughs> his fault. Thank you. I think that's what I needed right there. Thank you so much, Matt. We appreciate. We'll see you at the expo this weekend. <laughs> Bye. There he is, Matt Mitrione and his uh, his son, who continues to steal the show on these. MMA hours week after week. A nice little prop there with the arm and the, the headgear. Fantastic stuff.